Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we'll be discussing about the concept of process schedulers. So in one of the previous videos, we discussed about uh, the concept of multi-programming and time sharing. So there was something called multi-programming, and there was something called time sharing. Okay, so multi-programming was a concept wherein we made sure that at any point of time the CPU was never uh, let to be like idle. So every time there was some of the other process which used to run on the CPU. So we never used to keep this idle. Uh, Multi-programming was basically uh, used to make sure that there is maximum uh, utilization of the CPU. And there was one more concept wherein um, which was called the time sharing. So here what we used to do was we used to provide uh, some time called the time quota. So we used to give this time quantum to all the processes which are there in our system. And as soon as that time elapses, we used to switch the process. I mean, we used to switch the CPU uh, from one process to another. So these were the two concepts. And if you see, like the CPU should actually be moved from one process to another process in both these cases. Now, there must be some pro process which should be basically doing this uh, uh, activity. So those uh, programs are basically called the process schedulers. So these are the ones which uh, actually help in moving the CPU from one process to another. So in this video, we'll actually be discussing more about these uh, process schedulers. Before moving to the process schedulers, uh, I think it's better to understand something called the scheduling queues. So we'll first talk about scheduling queues. Uh, there are actually three types of queues. So one is called the job queue. There is one more called uh, ready queue and we also have the device queues. Device queues or they are also called IO queues. Now what is a job queue? So if you consider all the processes which are there in the system, they basically reside in this queue called the job queue. So every process will be present in this job queue. This should basically be your disk. So every program that you write, it will be stored in the job queue. So uh, what we'll basically do is the program which is there in the disk will have will become a process when it moves from uh, the hard disk or your uh, non-volatile memory to your volatile memory which is your uh, RAM. So the processes when they move from this disk to RAM, they are actually moved from this job queue to one more queue called the ready queue. So basically your job queue will have all your programs sitting idle. And then once they are ready for execution, they will be moved from job queue to one more queue called the ready queue. So these uh, processes which are there in this ready queue are actually stored in the main memory and they are waiting for the CPU. So they are actually uh, ready to be executed. That's why they are called, uh, they are present in this uh, so-called ready queue. Now, let's say the process is executing. So it has its CPU. So it's, it's I mean, it is uh, there in the main memory. It has been dispatched. It is executing. Uh, during the course of execution, let's say it wants some I.O. So it wants to perform some input-output uh, activity. So it needs some uh, I.O. So in that case, we will actually move the device, uh, move the process from this ready queue to some, some queue called the device queue. So every device in our system will have its own queue basically. So just to like uh, Give an example, I mean, all these queues are basically, we, we, we can represent them with some diagram called the queuing diagram. We have uh, this queuing diagram. So with this diagram, it will be much more clear. So initially, every, every process would basically be in this job queue. Now, once the process, uh, once the, sh uh, the scheduler should actually, these schedulers will move the processes from job queue to this uh, ready queue. So ready queue is basically, uh, will, th these processes are now moved from the disk to the main memory basically. Now they are waiting for the CPU. So we have the CPU. Let's say uh, the scheduler will now pick up the process from this ready queue. It gives it CPU. Now that process will uh, go on and do its execution. Once the execution is done, we will basically terminate. It will go out of the queue. Now what if uh, it was executing and then it, it was requiring some IO operation to be done. So in that case, we will basically move uh, the same process to one more queue called the IO queue or the device queue. So this would be your device queue. 
if there are multiple processes in this queue then it has to wait for the IO so once it gets the IO it will do its input output operation then it can be moved back to the ready queue uh, there are other uh, things which can also happen while it's executing so maybe uh, the time quantum whatever we had given for that uh, process maybe that elapses so the time elapses so in that case also we would have to basically uh, move it to the ready queue again or maybe the process has created a child process using the fork operation and then the child would basically execute next so this child once it completes the execution then again the same process the parent process would be moved back to the ready queue or let's say the process was running there was some interrupt which occurred if there was any interrupt which occurs then also we will have to basically remove it from the ready queue move it uh, to this interrupt uh, once the interrupt is done basically it will again be moved back to the ready queue so this entire diagram is basically called the queuing diagram which uh, represents all these uh, different types of queues uh, the rectangles here basically are your queues and i think we should be representing all these by the processes so these are the basically activities which are happening and uh, these are your resources cpu and io so the queuing diagram uh, whatever flow we have we have the process flow we basically represent through these arrows so this is how a queuing diagram basically looks like so just to give one more um, just to like iterate through this one more time we have a job queue so there is one scheduler which will basically pick uh, the the process scheduler will pick processes from the job queue and move them to the ready queue so this activity is done by the scheduler again we'll have multiple processes in the uh, in the ready queue there must be uh, some scheduling done wherein we pick up some process from the ready queue and give it cpu so this has to be also done by the scheduler so if you see there there should be different types of schedulers here so we'll discuss about those so there are in schedulers we basically have uh, two major types one is called the long term scheduler and the second one is actually called the short term scheduler so this scheduler whatever uh, scheduler we have like mentioned here which is basically taking uh, processes from the job queue and uh, moving it to the ready queue this scheduler is called your uh, long term scheduler and uh, the scheduler which uh, helps in picking processes from the ready queue and gives it cpu this is your short term scheduler now why do we call this uh, short term and why do we call this long term so if you consider the short term scheduler once a process has been given a cpu it will basically keep on executing and uh, the amount of time which it gets for execution before moving to any of these states is very small so it's very short so like at most it, it will be in milliseconds like in hundreds of milliseconds it will actually like be requesting for some io or the time quota would like elapse something like this would happen so the t amount of duration like the time duration uh, in which this event happens that that is like very short that's the reason why it's called a short term scheduler but if you consider uh, processes being picked from job queue to ready queue this will basically involve the creation of a process so you would have your program sitting in the job queue you would have to basically create a new process this is a much bigger task and it will take longer time so like in minutes it will be executed so that's the reason why it's called a long term scheduler a long term scheduler has uh, it should be actually a very good scheduler so the reason uh, so it is basically going to determine your degree of uh, multi programming so what is this degree of multi programming degree of multi programming will tell you how many processes will be present in your ready queue so it will be basically uh, an activity which is done by the job queue to fill up the ready queue so the long term schedulers will basically determine the de degree of multi programming like how many uh, processes should be present in the ready queue this will be decided by the long term scheduler apart from this uh, the long term scheduler should also make sure it picks up uh, a good mix of processes so whatever processes it picks up uh, it picks up so it should have a uh, a good mix of processes so we basically would be having two types of processes one would be your cpu bound process and the other can be your io bound process now a cpu bound process would uh, most mostly spend its time doing some 
uh, execution. So th that is the reason why it's called CPU bound. Whereas I/O bound processes are those which will uh, which will mostly spend time on doing some I/O activities. Now, if the long term scheduler is not that good and it always picks up sh CPU uh, sh CPU bound processes, then in that case, most of the time uh, the processes would basically be doing um, execution and our I/O queues would be empty. So there would be an imbalance created. Now again, if it is mostly picking up I/O bound processes, then in that case also, uh, our ready queue would be uh, empty most of the time. Our CPU would uh, not be utilized properly. So again, there would be an imbalance uh, created. So just to have a stable, uh, stable system, we need to have a good mix of CPU and I/O bound uh, processes. So this is again a job of long-term uh, schedulers. So if you consider, uh, let's say the long-term scheduler uh, is able to do its job properly, uh, then if it is not able to do its job properly, then we may uh, end up having an imbalance between the CPU bound and the I/O bound uh, processes. So in such a case, there is a need for one more scheduler basically, so which is called a medium-term scheduler. So what this will basically do is, if the long-term scheduler is uh, somehow leading to uh, an imbalance between these, the medium term scheduler can actually pick up uh, some, like if, if there are more CPU bound processes which are picked up uh, by the scheduler, it can balance it out, like it can swap out the CPU bound processes from the ready queue and uh, then maybe uh, swap in some of the IO bound processes. So it will basically do something called the swapping with which uh, it can balance out these two operations. So if we have our jar ready queue and if this has like a multiple uh, more, more number of CPU bound processes, it can basically swap out. So it can swap out uh, such process and then uh, once, it, once it sees that uh, uh, CPU bound processes have become stable and IO bound processes have become more, then again it can swap in the same process. So it can do the swapping and uh, make sure that the CPU bound and IO bound processes are balanced. So this is all about uh, process schedulers. So just to have a recap, we understood uh, what process schedulers are, like uh, how, what are the different types of queues we have. We have something called job queue, ready queue and the device queue. Uh, so job queue will be uh, storing all your programs. Uh, it is mostly your non-volatile memory like your uh, hard disk. And um, ready queue will uh, store all the processes in the main memory. And device queue will have all the processes waiting for the I.O. So the long term scheduler will pick processes from your job queue, move it to the ready queue. The sh uh, short term scheduler will pick up processes from the ready queue and uh, give it CPU. And then uh, if, if there is an imbalance created, in such a case we would also need a medium term scheduler which will swap out uh, and swap in the IO bound and CPU bound processes to have, an, have a balance. So this is uh, all about process schedulers. Thank you.